Hey guys, welcome to another one of these super fun Math 11 videos. Um, today we're going to be starting a new chapter, Quadratic Functions, um, and we're going to be doing section 3.1, Properties of Quadratic Functions. So here's a list of things that we're going to be covering in this video. Um, we're going to be going over some theory and then solidify that with a few examples. So, what is a quadratic function? A happy face or a sad face? Well, um, this is basically how I like to think of quadratic functions. The happy face or sad face. That's how you know it's a quadratic. Um, see, this pattern distinguishes a quadratic function from every other function because they always follow this particular pattern. So, what actually makes... Um, a quadratic function, a quadratic function is firstly, it is a polynomial of degree two. So that x squared term, and um, you can see in the g of x, the x actually gets squared if you expand it out. Those x squared terms are what make um, a quadratic a quadratic. Um, also, the value of a must be um, a non-zero because that just changes the degree of the function. The property that makes a quadratic function a quadratic function um, is this idea of first and second differences. So um, the second differences are always constant and non-zero, um, but the first differences in a quadratic function are related by addition. So um, if you notice, you can add um, negative 2 and negative 4 to get negative 6. And the same goes on, um, and it follows this pattern. And um, all of this together creates a quadratic function. So um, another thing to notice about uh, the second differences is if the second difference is less than zero, um, the graph will open downwards. But if it's greater than zero, the graph is going to open upwards. So there are three general forms that you can express a quadratic function in, standard form, factored form, and vertex form. So these all look completely different and you should be able to recognize this as you keep going um, and switch between form to form with more and more practice, obviously. Um, but standard form is ax squared plus bx minus c. Factored form is a x plus m um, multiplied by x plus n. And um, vertex form has the h and k terms, which we're going to be working with a lot, um, especially in the quadratics unit. So another thing to keep in mind is that a can never equal zero. And um, so long as it can never equal zero, it should be able to follow this form. OK, so in this example, we're going to be um, using factored form to find the equation of this graph. So factored form is over here, a x minus r multiplied by x minus s. So if we look at the properties of this function, um, the graph is opening downwards. That means you have a negative coefficient. Um, there is an axis of symmetry at x is equal to 3.5. And um, there are two x-intercepts, one at 3, 0, and another at 4, 0. So um, now we have information gathered about um, this, this graph, and we're going to be substituting it um, into factored form to solve for the equation. Right? And so this is factored form over here. But you need to remember that you substitute the x-intercepts in for r and s, um, not for x and f of x. For that, we will be using um, a particular point on the graph to solve for a and then substitute that back into the equation. Um, we do this over here. So we substituted the x-intercepts um, 3 and 4 in for r and s, respectively. And then we substitute this other point, 3.5 and 0 0.5, in for x and f of x. Right? So at every x value, we put 3.5. And for f of x, we put in 0 0.5. And now we're just going to solve for a. So 0 0.5 is equal to, so 3.5 minus 3, which is 0 0.5, and 3.5 minus 4, which is negative 0 0.5. So we multiply that to get negative 0 0.5, and then we divide 0 0.5 by negative 0 
um, to get negative 2 is equal to a. So now that we have our a value, um, we can substitute that back into the equation to get an equation negative 2 x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 4. And this is factored form. Okay, so here is an example in vertex form. Um, we're given a function. We have to state the vertex, direction of opening, intercepts, and um, domain and range. So we have the vertex at 5 and negative 3, and we know that because of the h and k values. Um, the negative 5 um, is the opposite, so it, it becomes 5 and negative 3, right? And the direction of opening is downwards. Um, for intercepts, we do not have any x-intercepts, right? Because it opens downwards and the vertex is at 5 and negative 3. So automatically we can assume that there are no x-intercepts, right? But if you substitute in 0 for x, you get y is equal to negative 15.5. That means there is an x-intercept at 0 and negative 15.5. Um, the domain is x is an element of the reals because there are no restrictions on the x. Um, but because the vertex is at 5 and um, negative 3, there is a restriction on the range because um, it opens downwards. So um, the range should just be y is less than or equal to 3. And you can see that um, with this graph right here, right? So... There are no x-intercepts, the domain is not restricted, and the range does have a restriction, and there is a vertex at 5 and negative 3. So we can get all of this information just by analyzing the properties from the equation itself. So here's another example involving vertex form. Um, in this one, we have to write the equation. So just a reminder, vertex form is a x minus h squared plus k, and a cannot equal to zero. So this is the table of values that we're given um, that we have to use to make the equation. So from this table of values, what we do know is that there's a vertex, and it's at 2 and 5. Why? Because the values two, 1 up and 1 down, so at x equals 1, and x equals 3, the y values match, which is, it leads back to the properties of a quadratic function, right? And so the vertex is at 2 and um, 5. The parabola also passes through um, the point 3 and 8. So we're just going to pick a random point from the table of values to work with. And we use um, the vertex form f of x is equal to a x minus h squared plus k, and we substitute in um, the value of 3 and 8 into the graph as well as uh, the vertex, right? So the vertex goes in for h and k, but remember that you do not, the minus value stays in front of the 2 unless it was a minus 2, which would flip the sign. And um, for x, we put in 3, and for f of x, we put in 8, because that's the random point we're using to solve for a. So if we just simplify this, we get um, 8 minus 5, which is 3, and then a multiplied by 1, because 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. And that just means that a is equal to 3. And now that we have our a value, we can just substitute that right back into the equation, to get this equation right here. And if you're ever unsure that your equation might be wrong, just substitute a value. So if you substitute in one, you should get f of x is equal to eight. And that's how you know you did it correctly. So um, here's a quick summary of everything that we went over in this video. Um, the first thing is quadratic functions can be expressed in different algebraic forms, standard, factored, and vertex form. Um, in standard form, we we'll mostly be working with completing the square, but factored and vertex form um, are the ones you would probably be using the most. A quadratic function is um, one of degree two, and quadratic functions can be represented using function notation, a table of values, or by graph. So we saw all three um, in the examples we covered in this video, and 
quadratic functions have constant non-zero second differences. So if there's a, no a negative coefficient, it opens down. If there's a positive coefficient, it opens up. And we've seen this in previous videos, and um, we will see this in the next chapters when we review the difference between quadratic functions and um, the properties of different types of functions like exponentials. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys keep up with the rest of this course.